Hello and welcome back to the channel, 40k theorists. I am Kevbot the Great, the host of the video, and today we're continuing our look at the Halloween adjacent factions with the world eaters, the slasher guys and such, you know, Halloween and stuff. Anyway, we're taking a look at the world eater terminators today because they're nuts and everyone should be running them. So if you like these unit breakdowns, thunder hammer that like button, chain fist the subscribe button, and Nurgle's bell icon, leave a comment. Tell us what you think of this video, and then check out our other videos as well. We do have a second channel, it's linked down below, it's a lot less casual, it's basically just let's plays and discussions and shit like that. So if you want to laugh your ass off watching me play Space Marine 2 and things like that and me raging really hard, uh, check it out. And so, my friends, world, e world leaders are an insane faction. <laughs> they have so much gas. Their terminators are gas, like high octane. So let's start, like we usually do, and take a look at their data sheet. It is what you would expect from a Terminator squad. So they move five, their toughness five, they've got a two up save, uh, four up invul, and three wounds, leadership six, and OC of one. Now, unlike a lot of things in this index, they have guns. They can have either combi bolty, combi bolties, <laughs> combi bolters, combi weapons, and then some guys can take a heavy flamer or a Reaper auto cannon, just one out of five. If we take a look at their melee weapons, their accursed weapons are strength six AP two one damage. The Chain Fist is Strength 9, AP 3, 2 damage. Your Paired Weapons, same thing, Strength 6, AP 2, 1 damage. And then your Power Fist is Strength 9, AP 2, 2 damage. And then their abilities, of course, they have Deep Strike. And then they have Blood, Leaf, or Blood Fury, Bloody Fury, that's the one. Each time a model in this unit makes an attack, add one to the hit roll if the unit is below its starting strength, and add one to the wound roll as well if they're below half strength. So, alright, well, what makes them so good? Well, like, literally everything about them, they're 180 points for five. That's for starters. Then, we have three dudes with a fist, so that's nine attacks there. We then have a dude with a chain fist, so three attacks there if you want it, and I'm pretty sure you want it. And then you also get to take a Reaper Auto Cannon. They have Devastating Wound Guns because you take the combi weapons, but fuck that. Let's charge. Oh wait, damn, it says here that on the charge, I get plus one strength and attack. Okay, so each of those fists are four attacks at strength 10, because for whatever reason they're strength 9 base. So yeah, then you have a chain fist, or you have two accursed weapons, but it's a chain fist, and that's another four attacks at strength 10, but AP 3 with anti-vehicle 3 up, and then you do also get five attacks with an accursed weapon that becomes strength 7, and AP 2 and 1 damage. They're terminators, so they're toughness 5 with 3 wounds with a 2 up save, 4 up invuln, but they hit with 16 strength 10 attacks at AP 2 and AP 3 for flat 2 damage, and then some, some extra random stuff at strength 7, AP 2, and then 1 damage. They're likely going to have a 6 up feel no pain all the time, which makes them annoying to destroy sometimes. It makes 3 damage weapons less, uh, less efficient. And so let's just quickly roll over their army rule and their detachment rule again. Detachment rule, we just went over it. It's plus one strength, plus one attack if you charge. Your army rule is Blessing of Corn, And so you have access to things like plus two inches to your move, a six up, feel no pain, sustained hits, fights on death on a four plus, lethal hits, and advance and charge. So yeah, uh, they can be moving seven inches. They can be advancing and charging. And they have guns that cause uh, mortal wounds to infantry. Angron's gonna be around them, giving them rerolls to hit. Angron could give them plus one to charge out of deep strike. They could be moving seven inches, be advancing and charging, and you could use a strat, Apocalyptic Fury, for plus, it's an auto six advance. Uh, so that makes them move 13 inches with a possible plus one to charge, which of course you could reroll if necessary. A 10 man unit is 360 points, a five man unit is 180. If a single one of them dies, the entire unit becomes plus one to hit. And then if they're below half, plus one to wound as well. So even just like a few of them being left, like two power fist guys out of the five being left are just nasty. Hitting on twos, wounding on threes and twos with four attacks apiece at AP2 to damage. Like it's a scary ass unit, I'm telling you. But like we're playing world eaters, so we really want to charge on turn one. Well, that's easy. You take Lord Invocatus, you scout a Terminator squad six inches, put up the blessing for plus two move, put up the blessing for advance and charge, and then you have at least one of those units moving 19 inches before it's able to make its charge roll. It's a fucking Terminator squad, dude. <laughs> if you have a 10-man squad, it has like 32 attacks with all of its fists. At strength 10 AP 2 and 3, flat 2. Dude, 
let's break these down even more. Or maybe we're just stacking more shit on. We're gonna summarize because there's so much going on here. This is the, the most versatile Terminator squad like in existence. Plus one to hit if they're damaged, plus one to wound if under half. Seven inch move. Access to scout six inches. Access to advance and charge. Access to auto advance six. Access to full rerolls to hit in the shooting and fight phase. Access to plus one charge, including out of deep strike. Access to plus one to wound monsters, vehicles, or character units, so everything. A six up feel no pain. Access to sustained hits or lethal hits. Access to minus one damage, only in combat. Hitting with 32 attacks at strength 10, AP2, flat two damage. An additional 10 attacks at strength 7, AP2, and 1 damage for 360 points. Like, even a regular Terminator squad would have, like, 27 attacks at not strength 10, which is less attacks at a less strength, and not including the extra 10 attacks they get at strength 7, and not with any access to any of the above stuff. Like, what? <laughs> this unit is insane, dude. And with full rerolls? They get that in their next shooting phase. So if you pop that on Angron and then either move them up out of cover or you're deep striking them in, you can be putting out 24 shots with full rerolls to hit that then cause dev wounds on a four plus against infantry. So yeah, like 16 shots with combi weapons with full rerolls is 12 hits that makes six devs. The two reapers get you like eight hits, maybe another dev and some armor save. Maybe you just take flamers. Maybe you just take more combi weapons on those instead. I don't even know. But if you're taking a five man unit, expect them to chip away like four wounds from an infantry unit, which is a, a good grenade throw every time they shoot, basically. And it doesn't matter what their save is, and that's just really nice to have in an army that doesn't really have any guns. So, it's time to do some theory hammer. It's hammer time. We'll do a five-man unit with no strats or combat-based abilities, like plus one to wound or sustain or anything. So none of that. But we will put anger on nearby for rerolls to hit. And then we'll just double it for a ten-man, and then we'll see what a ten-man with a dead guy and with some buffs on them can do. So more like a nine man. With our five man, we get about seven damage through on a toughness 10 tank with our fists. We get another three-ish from the chain fists. We get about another one from the accursed weapon. That's like 11 and a half damage to a predator, to a plague burst, to a hammerhead. From five dudes with only rerolls to hit from Angron nearby. We're talking 23 damage if it's a 10 man unit that took no damage at all. But what if we had say, one destroyed guy to make us plus one to hit, the strat for plus one to wound, sustained hits from our blessings, and then full rerolls from Angron. What do we get then? Do we get gross amounts of damage? Well, let's take a look. There's kind of a lot to get through, so we're gonna go through it as quickly as we can here. Four is to wound, three up save, so this is like a land raider with armor of contempt. You do about nine damage to it, you kill two to five models. Four is to wound, four up save, you do about uh, 14 damage, or kill four to seven models, so something like Lich Guard in that case. Yeah, something that's like minus one to wound for some reason, something that they would have to wound on fours. Fours and fives, you're talking around 19 damage, or four to nine models, depending on how many wounds they have, so like Squig Hog guys with Art of Nails in the WOG, I love that, because they have a five up invul and toughness seven and minus one to wound, so that's a, a good profile to do math against. Fours and sixes, you're looking at 23 damage, or six to 12 guys, so this is just gonna be regular squig hog boys. Threes to wound, three up save, you're looking at about 12 damage, not great there, or three to six models, and this would be something like Votan Terminators with Armor of Contempt, but you would kill six of them in that case, because they're only two wounds apiece. If you're wounded on threes against a four up save, you do about 18 to 19 damage, or kill four to, to nine models-ish, maybe even five. Uh, if you're hitting something like Custodians in this case, you're gonna kill around four of them. Wounding on threes against a five up save, you'll do about 25 damage to that or kill, geez, six to 12 models. So something like Aggressors or just boys during the WOG, you know, something like that. Threes to wound with a six up, you're looking at around 31 damage. I don't know what this would be against, like some sort of, I guess a Piranha. You do 30, 31 damage to a Piranha. Uh, you kill all Votan bikes, you kill eight Votan bikes or 15, some other type of thing. If you're wounded on twos against a three up, so this would be like Terminators with Armor of Contempt, you'll still kill four of them, you'll still do 15 to 16 damage against some sort of target. Twos and fours, you're looking at 23 damage, or six to 12 models destroyed, so something like Sisters without a Magifier. In that case, you're looking at around 12. Twos and fives, looking at 31 damage, or eight to 15 models, so something like a Cursed Cultist. And then in uh, twos and sixes, you're looking at about 10 to 20 models destroyed there, about 40 damage, which is gonna be Guardsmen or 
scouts or something similar like that. So 10 to 20 models, 40 damage. Yeah, uh, this unit is pretty good. It kills half a Terminator squad by itself with just the fists. So you're going to kill a fifth Terminator with the other stuff that's attacking for sure. And so, yeah, this unit is... Um, Putting the damage through, we do have our chain fist to swing with as well. They are a little bit better AP, so you're not going to be getting three up saves against this in like any scenario. So against fours and fours, so fours to wound and a four up save, you'll do about four damage. So uh, not sure what kind of models this would be, but this would be against something like I don't know him, like Angron or something like that. But you will kill, you know, one to two of them. Force to wound with a five up, you're looking at about six damage or one to three models. This would be something like a Norn assimilator. Again, I'm not really sure off the top of my head what sort of models would be getting this wound and save profile off the top of my head, but if you're wounding on fours, getting a six up save, you're looking at about seven damage to that target and killing two to four models. So something like a horror specs, it's toughness 11, it's got a three up save. So you're wounding it on fours with your plus one two wound and it's only getting a six up save then. Again, something like a land raider or Votan terminators with uh, armor of contempt. You're looking at about six damage or one to three destroyed models. So that's going to be threes to wound against a four up save. If you're attacking something like a plague burst, so you're wounding it on threes and it's getting a five up invuln, you do around about eight damage to it or you'll kill two to four models. So like a Lehman Russ, a plague burst, something like a tank like that. Wounding on threes against a six up save you're, will result in about 10 damage or uh, two to five models destroyed. So some toughness 10 tank without armor of contempt, basically, or like a hammerhead. If you're winning on twos against a four up save, you're looking at about seven damage or two to four models. This would be the rest of the Terminators getting a hit here. So you do kill six Terminators with your Terminator swinging in, which I think is actually more than the uh, Exalted 8 bound can do. If you're winning on twos against a five up save, 10 damage, two to five models, so Grey Knight Marines, Impulsor with a dome, something like that. Uh, twos and sixes, 12 damage. Three to six models, you know, Rhino, regular Marines, or I guess even like Aggressors, uh, Sword Brethren, or Chosen, or something like that. We then do have to attack with our Cursed Weapon. Wounding on fours against a three-up save, do about one damage, you won't even kill a model. Um, fours and fours, one damage to two damage, not even a model. You do like a wound. Fours and fives, you're looking at about two damage or about a wound. Fours and sixes, you're looking at about two to three damage or about a wound, maybe two. Threes and threes, you're looking at one damage or a wound. Threes and fours, you're looking at about two damage or one to two wounds. Threes and fives, about two to three damage, one to three wounds. Threes and sixes, three damage or one to three wounds. So that would be something like a piranha. Twos and threes, so terminators, you do about one wound or one damage. Twos and fours, so regular terminators like without armor of contempt or something like that. About two to three damage or one to three wounds. Twos and fives, three damage, one to three wounds. This would be like regular Space Marine guys. You kill like one and a half of them. Twos and sixes, this is going to be Guardsmen or something like that. Uh, scouts, you know, something along those lines. Do about four damage, kill one to two models if they're Scouts, some, um, up to four if they're Guardsmen. So this, this adds a little bit of extra damage there. But against something like a Land Raider or a Lehman Russ, you're only doing like one or two damage. Against anything important, you're doing like one wound, so these aren't great. They do much better against things like Space Marines or Guardsmen. But in total, we can kill six Terminators, we can kill an entire unit of Custodians, and like these are things that most units can't fully destroy in one round of combat. I'm fairly certain that six eight bound only kill around five Terminators instead of six. Now this unit is more expensive, but per model, it's not. And remember that with this math, we're actually a nine man unit. So we're actually looking at about the same points cost at that point. So really good. Really a lot of damage can come out of this really cheap unit that can move really fast and advance and charge and shoot guns at you. I like these Terminators, but like what if we had a six up feel no pain and minus one damage in combat? How insane do we become? Well, it takes almost 500 chainsword attacks to destroy the unit. You hit with 324, get 108 wounds, I fail 36 on a 3 up save because they are AP 1. I take 36 damage, I roll all the Fiona Pains, I make si uh, 6, and I take 30 wounds, and that's 3 to each model. For Power Fist, you'll only need 162 of those. You'll hit with 108, wound with 72, I'll fail half on my Invuln, they're only 1 damage, so it's 36 again, I make 6 Fiona Pains, and I still fail 30 of them, which is enough to wipe the unit. With Concussion Mauls, things get a little weird because you have to allocate two to each guy because they are minus one damage. But it looks like you need around 76. And this is including them being plus one to hit and plus one to wound. You get 53 hits, 
44 wounds. I fail half of them. It takes two hit to destroy one model. And for every set, uh, set of like four that you roll, if you roll it six times, one guy's gonna roll double six on average. And so you need a couple extra hits to get through just to be safe, but you're allocating four damage to each guy. At some point, some once someone's gonna roll a double six after the sixth time that you do it. So yeah, basically you need 76 attacks, okay? If you want eight bound eviscerators attacking these guys, yeah, you need 130 of those. You hit with 87, you wound with 72, you get 36 wounds, they become one damage because they're only two damage base. Could you imagine if they were three? You take 36 damage on after you failed your saves, uh, you make six of your feel no pains and you take 30 wounds, which will wipe the unit there. So yeah, pretty, uh, pretty hard. And uh, we do become pretty insane. It makes three damage weapons just hell. And that feel no pain really does add a bit because of the, that third wound. You do have a 50% chance to roll a six on three dice after all. So for each three damage hit that you're taking, you're actually taking two of them on a single guy. And that's for failed ones. That's for every six that you took. It actually should only kill two guys. So next what we're going to do here is compare this to the obvious e other unit in the codex that you're looking to use these instead of, which is the eight bound. So eight bound, they move nine inches. They can get buffed to 11. Terminators move five. They can get buffed to seven. Eight bound are T6. Terminators are T5. They both have three wounds. The 8-bound have a 5-up invuln, which you can technically buff to a 4-up invuln with a prince around, but you're paying 200 plus points for the prince. Terminators just come with a 4-up invuln. 8-bound can get a 5-up feel no pain and will have it almost all the time. The Terminators are going to almost all the time have a 6-up feel no pain. 8-bound are 6-man units. Their peak hit is, like, the number of hits they can get is about 27, but they are at strength 14, AP 3, flat 2. Or if they use their other weapon, you're looking at about 35 hits at strength 7, AP 2, two damage. A nine-man Terminator squad peaks at about 28 hits at strength 10, AP 2, flat two damage. Nine hits at strength nine, AP 2, flat two damage with anti-vehicle three plus, and then six more hits at strength seven, AP 2, one damage. Eight bound don't have guns. Terminators do, and it's actually pretty good against infantry. Eight bound are 51 and a half points a model. The Terminators are 36. They both have access to the same strats, they both have access to the same abilities, like from Angron or like Scout 6 Inches, but the Terminators do not have any character attachment where the 8-bound, they do. So the 8-bound are significantly more expensive. They're like 45% more expensive, but they also move practically twice the speed. They have somewhat comparable durability and comparable damage output, but they also don't have guns. Like I said, the Terminators are much cheaper and they do have guns, but they're slower at a 7-inch move if you use the Blessing. Comparable durability, they are a little bit harder to destroy, believe it or not, because of that same number of wounds and the, the two-up save, the four-up invuln base, that goes a long way. You do have a worse feel no pain and a worse toughness, but the save makes up for it. And so our durability is about the same, so that's a wash. It's not literally the same, comparable enough though, so it's a wash. Terminators are cheaper. Terminators have guns, which will also benefit from full rerolls with Angron. It's not crazy, but it's extra damage that you get to put out. The Terminators probably have a higher damage ceiling, but the 8-bound do move faster. I'd argue, though, moving 11 inches compared to moving 7 inches, in this particular circumstance where we're weighing all the pros and cons, is fine. You, you don't need it. You have access to scout 6 inches on the Terminators. You have access to advance and charge on your army. You have an auto 6 advance. You have a plus 1 to charge. On top of that, just running up your 8-bound 11 inches, advancing, and then charging is a really good way to actually just lose them on turn one. That's not how you play world eaters. You stage in the mid board. You don't rush right in. Once your opponent has to come up to get some of the objectives and once they're forced to get closer to you, that's when you strike. So you don't, so do you really need to be moving 11 inches? Is that really the deal breaker? Because I really don't think it is. I can scout my Terminator six inches or I can just deep strike them with a plus one charge from Angron. But if I don't, okay, I scout them six inches. Now I move seven inches. I'm exactly where I want to be, which is in the nook of the L on my side of the table, totally invisible, one inch outside from the wall. 1.1, obviously. If I don't scout them and don't deep strike them for some reason, I find basically that that's still an eight inch move minimum into like almost the same place if you deploy them in the right spot, if you intend them to be there anyway, and they're deployed like behind the ruin that's in, that's behind it. So do you really need that 11 inch move? I'd argue probably not. 
you do get a lot more bodies for the same points that still hit really hard and have about the same durability. They're a little bit more. And again, five Terminators pretty much kill a main battle tank on the charge. And so they kind of fill that role that eight bound take up, which is like a combat, scary, durable thing that's fast. And okay, we're not that fast, but like we kind of are when we stack what we need together. If I start in the nook of the L on turn two, 13 inches is probably going to get me to the same place that 17 inches would have. And don't go and play devil's advocate in the comments there. We're being realistic. This isn't a race between two units to see which one can reach the opponent's board edge first. We're racing towards some valuable unit slash objective. And if we both start in the same place, whether we move 13 or 17, the same fucking unit is getting charged. Do you feel me? Good. I thought so. So they fill that role, but they are a different unit. They don't hit quite as hard unless you take like a full 10 man, but are just as if not more durable. Have guns, which is a huge bonus in my eyes, especially when it rebuilds hits with dev wounds. I mean, that's just nice to have. A five man unit does the equivalent of like a high end grenade strat to infantry. They do like four mortal wounds each time they shoot if they have that full rerolls nearby and they're within rapid fire. But again, smaller table, six inch scout, deep striking, a seven inch move, I'm gonna get into rapid fire range. And then they will get into combat and hit really hard. Admittedly, probably not as hard as eight bound unless you take that full 10 man Terminator squad. But if you do, you do have 50% more models that are more durable. So it starts getting weird because there's other stuff in the army that you need to deal with, like 180 points or 360 points. Get out of here. That's so cheap for a unit of Terminators. Then we can have lethal hits if we really need it. We could use that in exchange of being plus one to wound. Just give lethals with full rerolls near Angron and just hand your opponent a ton of wounds on whatever tough thing they thought was safe. Give them sustained hits. Just destroy entire units at once. Kill more than half an enemy Terminator squad with armor of contempt up at once. And be cheaper while doing it. Or just be a Chad and stack the plus one to wound on top of it on basically anything because it also hits character units. And so it's kind of just like, uh-oh, you saw him chain through you and you shot him dead. Well, no, cool. We have stratagem still. Blood are offering. One CP, five victory points, please. Oh, you charged me? Okay, minus one damage. And of course, as mentioned like 50 fucking times, you can auto advance six inches. Coupled with unbridled bloodlust for advance and charge. This unit is just great. It's just great. It's just great. It's so fucking great. Take this unit. Take five of, the, of these units. This unit is nonsense for its points. It's just so independently efficient. When a normal unit does like eight damage to a main battle tank without any buffs on them at all, that's including Angron. You compare that to like a, a Grey Knight Terminator squad, which is 210 points. They do equivalent damage. They do about eight or nine on the charge as well. They'll do about the same damage to most targets. In fact, Grey Knight Terminators do about five wounds to a Land Raider. World Leader Terminators causes four to five wounds on a Land Raider as well. And again, that's with absolutely no buffs on anything, Terminators or Land Raider. And then funny enough, when my Terminators start dying, my unit starts becoming more efficient. I get plus one to hit and then plus one to wound. So that even when I have two guys left, they're still hitting really, really hard. And so I think I have thoroughly covered this unit though. I think it's great and I think you should use it. It's just a much, much, much scarier Terminator squad, basically. Uh, faster, harder hitting, cheaper. Like, what's not to like about that? And so, let me know down below what you 40k theorists thought of this unit and this episode. Chain fist that like and subscribe button. Thunder hammer Nurgle's bell. Check out our other videos. Just not the old, out-of-date ones. Those ones sucked anyway. Check out our second channel. It's linked down below. So thanks for watching, my fellow berserkers. Blood for the Blood God and Skulls for the Skull Throne, and I'll catch you in the next video.